This is Norbert Herber from Indiana University and GQ Audio. Here's another lesson based on the materials in Composing Music for Games by Chance Thomas. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a nested loop in WISE. This is just one example of what Chance calls interior pathing. The nested loop he provided for this tutorial has its own brief beginning phrase and was composed so that a much longer section of it can be repeated indefinitely until the game is ready to move on to the next musical building block. Here is how you create a nested loop music object in WISE. First, we have to import some audio. We'll right click on the default work unit, choose import audio files, click add files, select the nested loop, then click open and import and we now have that sound file right here in our default work unit. In order to keep working it's easiest whoops, if we switch to the interactive music layout and I notice that the transport has something pinned well, nothing pinned but let's get rid of that pin so it will audition what we select Here's the nested loop. Just give you a chance to hear it. So it's a big dramatic cue. And the way that Chance composed this is particular to the technique. There's a crescendo here at the beginning. You can hear that timpani roll leading up to a big cymbal crash. The orchestra comes in. The idea with this nested loop is to take this first section and allow that to play one time, but then we're going to put a loop marker in right here so that once it plays through that beginning crescendo it enters into the rest of the track it will play through this entire section when it gets to the end this little red marker that we see here in wise will actually loop back not to the green marker where it is now but to the green marker somewhere in this area so that this phrase ends loops seamlessly back to this phrase and this section is allowed to loop and play as long as is needed until events happen within the game and say we can leave this loop and go on to whatever comes next. Steps to make this are pretty simple but uh, it involves a few little detailed clicks and some menu operations and I'll show you how that works right now. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom in. Um, I'm going to use this button to zoom in all the way vertically and then I'm going to put the playhead right there by that first big transient just as an approximation so then when I click plus and zoom in it allows me to zoom in on that location with a little bit more accuracy. We're looking for a loop point that is at 0.686 seconds and it's easy to find when you're zoomed in but when you're out all the way it's a little harder to find. Um, you can already see here you know the waveform gets more dense in this area this is 0.6 seconds this is 0.7 seconds so you can see the loop point is going to happen right around this area where the waveform starts to look thicker. It's when the whole orchestra kicks in there's a lot more going on there so let's keep zooming in and we'll find that spot. Alright, and there we go. There's 0.686 seconds right there. So what I'm going to do right now is right click and choose add a custom cue. 
and I position that right at 0.686 seconds. This custom queue isn't going to be there uh, for too much longer. I'm just going to use it as a marker right now. Um, the reason why is, well, for some reason this is already, already selected. Usually it's not, but there's this option for snap to. You can snap to bars and beats, queues, or clips and loops. Well, this custom queue is something I can snap to when I have this queues option selected. And I find this a really helpful way to set loop points because I can zoom in, create a custom queue at exactly the place where I want that loop to be. Then, zoom back out. I can use the minus key to do that. Scroll back so I can see everything. And then, with this blue queues snap to option checked, I'm going to press the control key, and as you can see from that tooltip, it allows me to move this green marker without moving the waveform. And the snap to option will just allow it to snap right there, and you can see you get close, and then it just kind of magnetically jumps right to that location. And it, it lands right at 0.686 seconds where I need it to be. Well, now that that green marker is in there, I can right click, I can delete that custom queue that was there, I don't need that. I can drag the playhead back to the beginning. I'll zoom out all the way horizontally so you can see the whole thing and go ahead and play this again. And if I start just from that spot where it snapped, you can hear this is where the loop will come back. It's right at the beginning of that first big percussion hit. So here in the music segment editor, we can't audition this loop. It's just not possible. But what I want to do is count some bars so that when we get this into a playlist and we can loop it, we'll be able to count from the entry of the choir to the end of the loop and hear what it sounds like when it comes around. So the choir comes in at around this midway point and when they start singing there are five bars to the end of the loop. Four bars that are in 4-4 four, four, and then one bar of 7-4. Here's what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, loop. And the loop would happen right there. So this gives us an idea of where this file is going to end, when it's going to come back to this marker. But like I said, we can't hear that until we get that into a playlist. So let's go ahead and do that right now. If we right click on the nested loop music segment, we can choose new parent, music playlist container. And this is the segment of the game where you really kind of expect to have a boss battle. So I'm going to change the name of this to boss underscore music underscore playlist keep it consistent with everything else that we've had um, you know and again later on I'm not going to remember what nested loop means or if I'm working with a team they're not going to know that nested loop is the music that's supposed to go for boss so putting it in this playlist giving it that clear name makes it really really easy complete the process by dragging the music segment down here set the loop count to infinite and then we'll make sure that the playlist is selected here. Uh, this is pinned right now. Sometimes this pin can be kind of annoying. We'll unpin this and kind of reselect the, oh, I want the boss music playlist. There we go. Boss music playlist is what's loaded right there. Okay, I'm gonna hit play. When the choir comes in, I'll start counting bars, but when we get to the end of that bar with seven beats, you'll hear it loop back to where we set the green marker. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two,
two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's the choir again, so you know that this is definitely looped, even if you've lost track. Seven, loop. And it comes around again. So there you can hear how this whole thing works and loops when it's inside a playlist container like we have right here. In the final lesson that covers game syncs and switch containers, you'll learn how to create transitions in WISE. So you can cue this music and allow the nested loop to blend with other elements in the overall composition. Look in the description below for links to additional resources and the tutorial files that you see used here. Thanks for watching.